Yo, what's up, Snapchat world? Did these beef short ribs grab your attention? Because they should. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I make my braised short ribs. It's Friday, and I'm going to have these for dinner on Sunday night. <clears throat> but I'm going to start today because it's easiest if you do it over a three-day period. But forget about those ribs. Let's focus on these chicken bones I have over here. Right here, you can see I got some uh, chicken backs. Got some different chicken bones in here, all different bones and stuff. That's what I'm going to do, and this is the meat. I saved some of the meat. I'm going to put away for a meal or a snack or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to start the stock. Uh, it's too hot to cook a veal or beef stock for 12 hours and 13, 14 hours. So I'm just going to make a quick chicken stock. It'll take me like two hours, and it'll be good enough to braise these ribs with. So to start the chicken stock, I'm just going to take the bones, put them in a stock pot, take them over to the sink, and just cover the bones with cold water. And bring the water up to a simmer, and then I'll catch you up there when the water starts to simmer, and we'll take it from there. So as we wait for the water to simmer, I'm going to make a, a red wine marinade for the short ribs. But first, I just wanted to show you like how I and how a lot of people set up a workstation you know when you're doing you know making all these vegetable cuts and such so I would just have a wet rag underneath my cutting board I keep that there that's just so the board don't go anywhere over here I have a tray where I put my finished product here I have leeks I'm going to use I always keep a clean towel to wipe off my knife and keep my knife in the back and safe and I always have a bucket here for trash and waste and that's just a simple way to keep your uh, station set up so I have everything prepped for my red wine marinade and to make mine I just use about one leek just the whites and pale greens an onion celery stalk carrot parsley garlic thyme and uh, a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon this is just a five dollar bottle from the liquor store you see I pour myself a glass but that bottle is still full and to prepare this, you're just going to put your mirepoix, your vegetables and aromatics in a pan. Or I just, well, it's actually hot, but... And then a bottle of wine. And I'm going to bring that to a simmer. And once it simmers, I'm going to put a match to the wine. And I'm going to light the uh, alcohol. And once the alcohol burns off, we're going to bring it to a... Back down the room temperature. And you can see the chicken is starting to simmer and it's starting to foam up. So I'm gonna scrape all those impurities off. What I have is just a bowl of hot water and that just helps to wash your spoon off every time. So what you wanna do is you wanna go through and scrape all this white stuff off the top. What that is is just coagulated blood, protein, just uh, impurities and such that are gonna make your stock cloudy and uh, it's actually not gonna give you as much quality and quantity if you don't scrape this stuff off. Or if you were to stir it, it would stir into the sauce and break down. And that would ruin your uh, stock as well. So always make sure you scrape this off. It's part of the clarification. So you can see, I did what I said. I brought the wine to the simmer and I lit it on fire. And it'll probably burn for 30 seconds or so. And I'm going to let all the alcohol burn off. And then I'm going to turn it off and put it to the side. Because you have to bring it all the way down so it's cold because you're going to be putting raw meat so you can't cook the meat at all. If this was the winter time, I would just put the pot outside and let the cold air bring it to, you know, back down the room temperature. But, uh, this is going to reduce down and burn off all the alcohol. So I'm going to let that do that for a few minutes and I'll catch up with you. So, I don't know if you guys ever use leeks, but they're really dirty. If you can see in there, there's sand and dirt and there's in between all those leaves. So I want to show you a quick and good way I was shown to wash the leeks. First, just cut the tops off, cut the roots off, and then you're going to do a cut down the middle, rotate it, cut down the middle, but leave the end intact. Don't cut all the way to the end. So what you get is this nice fanny action. And you can wash in between all of those leek leaves very well. You can see all the dirt in between them. That all has to be washed. And then you can still cut it down 
because it's still attached at the end. Just want to give you that little tip. So over here I just have the uh, clear pollen aromatics and such that I'm going to add for the chicken stock. It's, uh, it's pretty much the same exact things I had for the uh, red wine marinade. One thing is I did cut the vegetables about half as big because they're only going to be in the stock for about a half uh, or an hour cooking. Whereas when they braise, they're going to be in the oven braising for about four hours. So they need to be larger to take the cooking for four hours where these need to be smaller to give up their flavor in one hour. I uh, used less garlic, added a few peppercorns. And in the last video when I showed you the uh, red wine marinade, I forgot to mention that there is a bay leaf in that as well. You can see it's been about a half hour. The bones have been cooking a little over a half hour. And that uh, I've been skimming. And now I'm going to add all the vegetables. Uh, I'm going to add the vegetables and herb. So I got all the mirepoix and aromatics in the stock pot. Now I'm just going to bring it back to a simmer. Let it simmer for at least an hour. Maybe a little longer. But it's chicken bones. They don't need to simmer for a very long time. And then I'll strain it off eventually. I'll catch up with you guys. So after the red wine marinade got the room temperature. I threw it in the fridge for about a half hour. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to individually portion out these spare ribs. I'm just going to cut them like right in between the bones. You get the idea. Then you have individual ribs. And then I'm just going to put them all in a, uh, just a bag and pour the red wine marinade over them and rotate them every couple of hours and let them uh, marinate overnight. So I strained the stock like five times nice and clean now. I'm just going to boil it, reduce it for a little while. I just tasted it and it's a little watery still. So I just want to reduce it a little bit. Maybe almost by half. Yo Snapchat. Good morning. So I took the marinade out of the refrigerator. And as you can see I separated the beef from the vegetable from the wine. So you're going to want to let the beef sit for about a half hour and drain off. There's probably some, yeah, there's some extra wine collecting. You just want to get all the excess wine off the meat. And then we're going to bring the uh, wine to a simmer and skim off all the impurities that form at the top, kind of like the stock. Over here I have the stock. And I, you see I strained off the excess fat. I left a little bit in there. But we're going to bring that up to temperature. And this one, to show you guys is meat. Anyone that says marinades don't work, I think this proves them wrong. Look at that burgundy color. So you can see the uh, purity starting to form at the top. And you can see underneath how the wine's pretty clear and looking clarified. So you start scooping all this again into just a bowl of hot water. So I skimmed off all the impurities. To clarify it and then I strained it into a clean bowl and I'm gonna wait about 15 more minutes for the uh, meat and vegetables to dry out some more as they've been dri dripping dry and pouring the excess wine back into the over here but uh about 15 minutes we'll start the meat all right guys so now what you're gonna do you're gonna take your meat you're gonna dry it a nice clean dish rag. Take it, season it generously with salt and pepper, and then lightly flour it, put it to the side. So you can see, I seasoned them, lightly floured them like I said. Over here I got my pan. I'm gonna get this thing ripping hot, put a little bit of oil in it. And I'm gonna do half the batch at a time, six and six. So you don't wanna crowd the pan, because you want them to brown, you don't want them to steam. When you cook, you want them to sear. So I'm gonna wait till this pan starts to smoke, and it just is now, so I'll catch you up in a second. All right, you can't see the camera, but the smoke's starting to wisp a little, or the oil's starting to smoke a little bit. So go ahead and start adding my meat.
Now I'm just going to brown them on each side, all six sides, for about three to four minutes on each side over a nice high heat. So I went and flipped them over. And you can see that nice dark crust they're getting. And that's the reason why we spent the time to dry the meat off, just to let it sit in the strainer for a half hour and tap it dry with the towel and, and then add the flour and all that. Just so that way the meat is nice and dry. <clears throat> and that gives you the best sear. And it's gonna leave a beautiful fond on the bottom of this pan, which is gonna be a base of sear sauce. So all six sides, about three minutes, four minutes. You want them all to look nice and crusty and beautiful like that. So you can see I got all my meat brown. I got them sitting bone side down in this Dutch oven. I got to pour off some of the excess grease. Now I'm gonna add the vegetables. You wanna brown them for probably seven, eight minutes. Get them nice and brown. And then pour them right on top of the meat. Also, at the same time, you add the vegetables to your oven to 275. So I got almost everything ready, as you see, for the braise. The stock's nice and warm. I'm going to skim off that stuff before I add it to the pot. So we're going to brown these vegetables, add it to the top. I'm going to add the wine to the pan, deglaze the pan, add it to the braise, and then cover it with stock. I'll catch you up. So as you see, the rest will just start to brown up. So I'm going to go ahead and add a nice dollop of tomato paste. And I'm going to brown that for about two minutes. You want to cook the sweetness out of tomato paste. Make it nice, like a brick red color. Brown it up nicely. So you might not be able to see it too much in the camera, but there's a bunch of dried up bond and stuff on the bottom of the pan. So the goal with that is put the wine in there. Scrape it all up with the wooden spoon. Once the wine comes to a simmer, I scraped all it up. I'm just going to add it to the Dutch oven. Which, as you can see, I've already added the vegetables too. So I added the wine and I added enough chicken stock so you can just barely see the tops of the taller pieces of meat. Because you want to make sure you make enough sauce for all these pieces of beef. So now I'm going to bring it to a simmer, cover it, put it in the bottom of the oven at 275 degrees for about four hours. I'm going to do four hours. So it's been just over two hours. I figure it's a good time to take, them, take a look at them, see how they're doing. Maybe flip them over if anything needs to be basted or anything. Just wanted to show you guys how they're looking after two hours. Put them back in the oven for another two hours. So it's been four hours. I just took it out of the oven. For the last hour, I let it cook without the lid on. Uh, I'm just going to let it sit here and cool for a half hour or so. That way the meat can... Uh, sit in the braising liquid and reabsorb some juice and such and then I'm going to take out and I'll catch up with you guys so I carefully pulled out all the ribs you can see over here I still got the braising uh, liquid with the vegetables in it and such so you want to take this and strain it all out run it through a very fine strainer a few times until it's nice and clean uh, show you the ribs are nice and tender of course I mean, you don't need much effort to eat them. <laughs> yum, yum. So that's all the vegetables from the braising. And this is all the sediment just from once the first straining. That's why it's important to get a nice, fine strainer like this. Because this, you're going to have a much cleaner sauce and it's going to have a much better uh, feeling on your tongue. I'm going to strain this through this strainer pie at least five times I would say well <clears throat> as you see I strained it a bunch of times and I just poured the braising fluid back over the ribs and I'm just gonna cover it and refrigerate till tomorrow 
and that's another reason why it's good to do this recipe over a few days is you can let this meat now sit in its uh, in the braising fluid overnight and it'll mature and marry and become even tastier than if you just ate it today and it'll taste better tomorrow than it does today basically what I mean so there you go we'll see you tomorrow yo snapchat so uh I'm starting to prepare things for tonight's dinner so the first thing I'm doing is just been cutting up some carrot into the uh, batonets and if you've never done this before I'll show you the simple way to do it first peel your carrot cut it into two inch sections and then you're going to square the carrot off the way you do that is you just cut along the edge and rotate so you're going to square the carrot off and then you're going to cut the carrot down into slices quarter inch and then from there you're going to cut them down again into quarter inch slices then you come up with these two inch by quarter inch by quarter inch batonets and you can just throw them right over to some water and they'll, I'm going to put these in the fridge and save them for when I'm ready to glaze the carrots later today alright so over here I took the uh, meat and braising liquid out of the refrigerator as you can see a fat has formed at the top and solidified so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off most of that fat I'll probably leave like a quarter of it scrape off three quarters of it and get rid of it and I'm going to take out the meat and put it to the side and I'm going to heat up the uh, braising fluid braising liquid I should say and I'm going to um, start to prepare that for the finishing sauce for tonight because it can take a couple of hours for it to reduce now that I scraped off a bunch of the fat and exposed the braising liquid I wanted to show you the consistency of it it's almost like jello and that's from all the natural gelatin inside the bones the chicken bones inside the uh, bones that were on the ribs and that's a good sign because that means your sauce is going to have a lot of flavor a lot of body I mean it's not runny water it's it's like jello almost you see good stuff so I heated the sauce up I strained it twice and I wanted to show you guys before I start reducing it how it looks I'm going to show you how full it is you see it's about three quarters full I'm going to show you the consistency of the sauce let me show you what happens if I put it on a plate too so you put it on a plate it just turns basically into water I just wanted to show you that how it looks before and how it's going to look after the reduction so what I got here is I just sliced some onions as thin as I could with my knife I don't have a mandolin but I got them pretty thin what I'm going to do with these is uh, marinate them in some cream because that's all I have if I had buttermilk I'd marinate them in buttermilk with a little bit of maybe some mustard and paprika some salt pepper and then right before uh, dinner I'll throw them in some flour real quick and deep fry them real, real fast and some bacon fat to make a little onion strings to garnish a little crunchy topping for the plate. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and start the carrots now. And then I'm going to put them away in like a toaster oven or a hot spot to keep, keep warm. So that way when it comes time, I don't have to worry about cooking four or five different things at once. I'll have the carrots ready. And I'll have the sauce pretty much ready. So then all I have to do is reheat the meat, glaze the meat, cook the risotto, and fry the onions. And that should pretty much cover the dish. So I got the carrot batons. I got some parsley, bay, thyme, sugar, butter, and peppercorns. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this pan up with water just about until it covers some of the uh, carrots not too much water the goal is you want to have enough water so by the time all the water reduces and evaporates the carrots are tender and all stuff so I'm gonna let these carrots simmer until they, they're nice and tender and all the water evaporates and it'll be in beautifully glazed carrots you can see uh, they're almost done. A lot of the water is gone. You see it's 
thickened up a lot. You can see it's almost all out now. All the water that is. Let's botch it for a second. I'm gonna start picking out all these herbs. them out you can see how beautiful they are you can see that beautiful sauce on the bottom so I'm just gonna leave them on this plate I'm gonna wrap it with tin foil stick them in a nice warm oven and once this sauce is reduced I'm gonna start cooking but I have to wait for the sauce to finish first so the sauce is almost ready you can see how much it's reduced it was up to here right, right about here now we're down to here See how it starts to coat the back of the spoon a little bit. More minutes, and I'm gonna take it off the heat and keep it warm. But for the risotto, I got some finely chopped uh, onion. I'm gonna make sure the grains are smaller than the grain of rice. I got the rice, the arborio. I just got some salt, pepper, some white wine, some dry white wine. In the fridge, I have um cream, butter, and cheese ready to go. I got my kitchen over here, because I'm gonna whip the cream and put it in the risotto to finish the risotto. Uh, a couple more minutes. Over here I got the beef. I just turned it on real low. I got some of the braising liquid in there with the ribs. All right, so I'm starting to see what I like. See how it's coating the back of the spoon? And write a line in it. Let's test it on a plate. See how it looks. See it's holding its line. All right, so I put the sauce back here on top of this hot toaster oven, which has the carrots in it. I also have my plate on top of it to keep the plate warm. Cause hot food likes hot plates. I got the oil that I'm going to fry. The onions. I got the beef reheating in here. It's starting to get simmering now. Turn it up a little bit. I got the chicken stock for the risotto. I got my salt tan pan, salt tay pan to make my risotto in. I got all my stuff over here. I got this bowl and strainer to strain out my sauce one last time. Got the onions, got the flour, got the mixer. So I'm gonna start by putting some oil in this pan once it gets hot. And I'm gonna sweat off these onions. And then I'm gonna add the rice. Well, I'll catch up when I add the rice. Alright, so I cooked the onion for about three minutes until it was just translucent, not until it started to brown at all. Added the rice, it's been in there for a couple minutes now. You just want to cook the rice for a couple minutes. Again, you don't want to brown the rice. You want to keep this dish white. Over here I have the beef. What I've been doing is every free second I get, I just come over here and grab a spoonful, you know, just baste the meat as much as I can. A little bit later I'll take the lid off and let that sauce reduce and glaze the meat. But for now, I just want to heat it up. But uh, this rice is almost ready. I'm going to add the wine in a second. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add the wine now. You know, I'm going to mix that in real nice. And you're going to let this wine cook until all of it is completely absorbed by the rice. And the reason you add the wine first before you add any of the chicken stock so that way the flavor gets in there first and it actually like seals into the rice and you can taste it in every grain of rice you will taste a little bit of the wine just it's just a way to ensure that you can taste the wine in the dish so i'm just going to cook this let it simmer until uh all the wine is completely evaporates and then i'll catch up there all right so you can see all the wine has evaporated now I'm going to cook it stirring pretty constantly so it doesn't stick to the bottom. I'm going to cook the rice until it completely dries out again. It's going to look and feel the same way it did before I added the wine. It's going to be nice and dry and all the rice is 
is going to not stick together. And that's going to be another way to ensure that uh, the wine flavor stays inside the rice granules. And again, the type of wine I use is just a dry wine. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc or you use a Chardonnay and oak aged Chardonnay if you want a little bit of woody flavor in your rice dish. You just gotta learn and experiment with wine. Alright, so you can see all the risotto is dried up. It's not sticking together so much anymore. If you smell it, it doesn't smell like wine so much anymore. It's starting to smell like toasted risotto okay, or toasted rice again. So that's what you're looking for. Now you're gonna start adding your hot chicken stock. I'm going to do two ladles at a time. And then you're going to constantly stir this. And that's what's going to make your risotto nice and creamy. And I'm also going to go start my whipped cream right now. So you're going to cook this. And when all the stock evaporates, you're going to add a little bit more. Cooking of this a little bit at, a little bit at a time. So you can see, I've been cooking this for like 10 minutes or so. It's starting to look real nice and creamy. A couple more minutes, I'll start tasting it. You want to get a nice al dente texture on the rice. See the beef's nice and warm. I'm going to keep uh, basting it and eventually the, all that stock will reduce. It'll coat the top of the meat with a nice sheen. We got the uh, cream ready too for the risotto. So the risotto is cooked. I got it to enough stock in there so it's nice and creamy. Now I'm going to start beating in five tablespoons of butter. Cold butter, one at a time. And in just another second, I'm going to throw the onions in the fryer. I just covered them in flour. So I'm going to stir this constantly, stir this butter in. Because you want the butter to emulsify into the sauce. You don't want to break and be greasy. Okay. So you can see I got all five tablespoons of that butter beaten into here. I just said it emulsified in. It's not broken. Now I'm going to add the whipped cream and the cheese. Ooh, sorry. Here's the cheese. Just some shredded Parmigiano Reggiano. And I'm going to beat in the whipped cream now too. I got the some of the onions done. I got some more in the fryer. I got the meat. As you can see, I said, look how shiny and glazed it's getting now. That the sauce is almost all, re all the way reduced in the pan. And I got the, the sauce back over here on the heat just to heat that back all the way through. We're almost ready. There it is, Snapchat. To finish this. It's a little ugly on that side. A little prettier on this side. Bon appetit, motherfuckers.